no, 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 no. I oh, what a catch! Oh my god. What a save. To another episode of Dingle DIY, guys. I'm on Dingle Die, uh, and this is my project car where I'll be taking around uh, Australia on a big road trip. So, in preparation for that, I'll be building a bed and throwing in a fridge and a whole bunch of things. Now, I've seen a lot of videos online about putting beds in the back of your car, and a lot of them are pretty craptacular. I've seen good ideas in some areas and bad ideas that go along with them, so I've kind of taken the best of everything, gotten rid of all the bad ideas, if you ask me, and then I'm going to put them all together into this epic bed. I wanted storage underneath, uh, and I wanted it to be long so that I could actually fit on the bed. But having that extra length means having the seats forward, so in my design there is an extendable section for the head part, and then when the bed's not in use we can collapse it down, roll the seats back and get on with driving. The second thing to this bed is that it's modular. I can flat pack it for starters, so I can pull the legs off uh, and flat pack everything if I don't want it in the car at all. And if I only want half of it in the car, I can keep the boot half in the boot, put the back seats in, and it's just a regular car with a bit of extra storage and organization in the back of the car. So I'll show you how to rip the seats out, just so I can get more storage. And then I'm gonna weld up this frame, uh, and then I'll show you how to cut plywood perfectly to the shape of your car with all these contours that you're gonna see. Uh, and then we'll upholster the panels, and then marry it all together with the metal frame, paint it up, and chuck it in. So, let's get stuck into it. There we go, that's part one sort of complete. Now once you've finished laughing at my welds, I'll show you how the legs, they slip in to these little droppers here. And it's all right, so I deliberately got two sizes of steel. Now one fits inside the other. So that's how the telescoping and the legs are gonna work and how the two pieces will join. And so this part can stay in with the back seats up. And now we can move on to making the extension piece. Now I've got this piece of timber here just to mimic the timber that will end up on top of here. And I'm trying to measure the gap between the top of the fridge and the bottom of the plywood. Uh, and then whatever amount I can chop the legs down to drop the bed by, I'm going to do that. I'm going to get the plywood as close to the top of the fridge as possible. Now if you're wondering how I'm going to access the fridge once the bed's on top, I'm going to do the plywood section of the bed in four pieces, so that way we can lift uh, one of the four panels off as we need it to access things below. All right, I've just cut a piece of ply oversized. Now this is gonna be one of the four quarters that I'm gonna make. Now by cutting it oversized, it gives me room to scribe against the contours of the car. Now we can just make a bit of a cardboard template and kind of just guess and check with some scissors and some textures. And then once we've dialed it in perfectly, we can transfer it onto the plywood. Now that we're pretty close, we can just grab a texture and just run along the edge draw a line on the cardboard, and you should be able to do that a couple of times and end up with a perfect result.
All right, now we've cut the cardboard parallel with the frame and the timber. We can just slide it back until we've exposed the timber underneath and then trace that line. Now we can cut this out of the timber uh, and keep sanding it or doing what we've got to do to make it fit perfectly. paint is drying. I just want to go over a few things, uh, design features that I decided to go with on the metal section of the bed. Now for feet, you can buy these plastic inserts uh, and they sit inside the tube and cap it off. So I've used a few of them as feet and you can also cap off any box sections to make it look a bit prettier. Now where the legs meet the frame, I slotted out the frame so that I don't have to remove the bolts entirely from the legs. I can just loosen them off, slide them in position and tighten them down. I've also spray painted the legs different colors so that uh, I can use a color coding system to figure out where they go. Because there's two long ones on the outside, a medium one in the middle, and then four short ones on the end. I thought that was a good idea. Uh, I've got the telescoping extension that slides in and out of the frame uh, and then a bolt on a piece of chain. So that bolt is just a locating pin and it's welded to the chain so I'll never lose it. Now some of the plywood is a bit curvy because it is so thin. Um, I just got unlucky with the piece I got. It wasn't perfectly flat. I'm not too worried though. Now with all these panels, uh, I upholstered them. I worked out a treat. When you're going to use contact adhesive, just follow the instructions on the can. Now I've wrapped over the edges where the edges meet the plastic, but where, where they meet each other, there's no carpet there to interfere. Now on the back side, I've just got these blocks. That's what locates these in relation to the frame. And lastly, I said in the car before, these were kind of curving and bending in different directions. Now to fix that, uh, you can use steam or boiling water uh, and pour that on the plywood and then force the plywood in the position you want it. For me, I just pinned it to the garage floor by weighing it down with some heavy stuff. Uh, I let that water soak in, the plywood flattened out, uh, and then as the water dries, it should hold its shape in its new position. I had this plywood left over from making the bed, so I figured I'd just cut a piece in. I just copied the boot floor that used to be in here, but that was just kind of plastic and not very strong plastic either, so I didn't feel comfortable putting the bed on top of that plastic. Alright, as it sits, the seats are all the way forward. Now if we want to lock them back, they'll lock in place and we can rest our pillows up against here uh, and they won't fall into the abyss. Now if I want to slide the seats back so I can actually drive the car, all I have to do is take these two panels out. And there's a locking pin in here. Pull that out, slide that back in, put the locking pin back in and then I can slide the seats back. Uh, and go for a drive. So how good's that? Alright, we still want access to the fridge, so all we need to do is pull this panel up. And the fridge is right below it. The good part about all of this is I can pull every panel off as I need if I need to get access to the tricky spots. Alright, that's it for the no compromise bed build. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you did learn something, give it a thumbs up. And as always, if you've got any questions, leave them below in the comment section. Now if you want to see the end result, uh, you want to see me take this thing on a big lap of, the, of Australia, make sure you subscribe, I'll be sure to upload that when the time comes.
Now what's next is wiring the fridge in and wiring in a second battery, but doing it in such a way that it's portable uh, and so that I can put it into different cars, like my Hilux for example. So if that's something that might interest you, that's another good reason to subscribe. Uh, and other than that, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.